the bell has rung. It's 12 o'clock uh, time for our next talk. Um, I'm very happy we have here a reference to a Belgian painter, as I'm Belgian myself. Ceci pas un dictionnaire uh, by uh, Sabine Poulin, Sabine Poulin from, uh, your, uh, from the Wissensnetz uh, der Mittelalterlichen Romania. So it's a cooperation, I guess, but you can tell us. Thank but you very much. Um, adding and extending lexicographical data of medieval Romance languages to and through a multilingual lexico-ontological project with subtitle. I apologize for the quite lengthy uh, title. Actually, I like these you know, one-word titles, but well, this one didn't really work out. But the agenda is shorter, less words, I counted this morning. So I'll start with a short introduction on the role of dictionaries and the situation of dictionaries. And I will introduce the ALMA project and its dictionary reuse, extension, further processing and dissemination. I evaluate a little bit what I said and come to a short conclusion. Dictionaries are at the core of historical lexicology, text philology, and historiography. They provide the means for grounding the research on stable knowledge of the language for generations of researchers. A quick example, to create a scholarly digital or not digital text edition, the permanent consultation of the dictionary, the relevant dictionaries of the language status in, in the focus, is vital for establishing a correct text and a correct text glossary or lexeme uh, inventory with well understood semantic scopes of the words in the texts. So dictionaries both are and facilitate foundational research. However, the funding of many comprehensive and long-standing dictionary projects has come to an untimely end. Lexicography, at least historical lexicography of Romance languages, and there it is, Old French, Middle French, um, Old Gascon, Old Occitan, and also Medieval Italian, the discipline my work is concerned with, this lexicography finds itself at a very difficult juncture. The project I will introduce now takes this into account and will contribute to the future of these dictionaries' content by making invisible lexicography, in fact. The project is called uh, Knowledge Networks in Medieval Romans Speaking Europe. It is an interinstitutional project run by the Heidel Heidelberg, the Bavarian and the Mainz Academies of Sciences and Humanities in Germany. We are a small team. We only have six positions, which is rather, which is rather small for three offices, but we run for quite a long time. We have 22 years of research, if all goes well. The project is directed by Maria Selig in uh, Munich, Wolfgang Schweikart and Elton Prifty in Saarbrücken and myself in Heidelberg. The ALMA project incorporates four dictionaries into its work. The Dictionnaire Nomadiologique de l'Ancien Gascon, DAG, uh, was a Heidelberg project, the funding has ended. The Dictionnaire Etymologique de l'Ancien Français, DAF, also Heidelberg, also funding has ended. And the Dictionnaire de l'Occitan Medieval, the DOM, run in Munich, the funding has ended. And the Lessico Etymologico Italiano, the LEI in Mainz, this is the only project that is still ongoing. When I say the funding ended, the funding end of these works was dictated by research politics not by content-related reasons such as the dictionary is finished or it has treated the alphabet or another reasonable things. Uh, and I should say that ALMA was just launched in December last year, so we're quite new and we're working since. ALMA, in a nutshell, its aim is to investigate the interaction between language, knowledge and scholarship in the Middle Ages. Our field of observation is the Romans culture sphere that sees the emergence of new knowledge networks expressed in vernacular languages next and parallel to Latin and slowly replacing Latin. The time period we focus on is around 1100 to around 1500. Languages are medieval French, Italian, Occitan and Gascon, also Spanish and Catalan, but to a lesser extent. Our main research question is, how are these languages developed into languages of knowledge and scholarship with a new functional areas that are technically and conceptually quite complex? We exemplify this by focusing on two domains, uh, that is on medicine and on law jurisdiction. These technical scientific languages, if you will, depicting knowledge and scholarship are a particular important part of the intellectual and cultural heritage of Europe. Also, the Romance languages are major carriers of cultural exchange in the Middle Ages that starts to establish the European identity as a knowledge society. 
The relationship between ALMA and the dictionaries I'll be talking about are manifold. First of all, the dictionary reuse, of course. ALMA will create its own corpora for medicine and law, parallel corpora in the four languages we are focused on. Um, so first, ALMA will work with some corpus linguistic methods, rather basic methods in comparison to what we've heard this morning already. Um, then develop the results of these methods into lexical semantic studies. These studies are something similar to dictionary articles, dictionary entries, not to be called dictionary articles, though to not make anyone think we are writing a dictionary politics again. So altogether, the project will implement a combination of quantitative machine-driven methods with competence linguistic methods. Both will be controlled by dictionary reuse. This involves the large uh, FAV, the Französisches Etymologisches Wörterbuch, the Dictionnaire du Moyen Français, the DMF, of course, dictionaries of the Ibero-Romania, and of course, Latin and Medieval Latin, and um, significantly, not of course, the DAG, DF, DOM, and LAY, the four dictionaries I have already mentioned. And in this case, the reuse of the dictionaries goes all the way down to the level of the databases and the uh, raw data that we can query in excess. Now, these dictionaries are crucial for the cognitive step from a given lexeme that we find with corpus uh, analytical methods to one or several concepts behind the lexemes. This is because they provide the means, the dictionaries provide the means for analyzing the meanings of the lexeme in constant confrontation with the language system as a whole that is only documented in the dictionaries. The second point is the dictionary extension. The ALMA corpora will enlarge the material basis for lexicography in a significant way, we believe. This includes the digitization of existing text editions printed as books. For example, the Chirurgie, written by Henri de Montville um, in 13 and 1314. This is an important textual witness of the 14th century. Um, the text is written in Old French and Latin at the same time. And the text has also already been exploited by, for example, the Tobla Lomage Dictionary of Old French, by the FAV and also the DF, but only partially and manually with no computerization involved. Also, the corpora uh, creation will include new text editions that we will make. For example, the editions of um, vernacular translations of the Chirurgia Magna, written by Gideon Choliac uh, in Latin in 1363. Despite its really big importance um, as a key text for didactic surgery, only the first treatise of only the French text, French translation, has been edited and exploited by lexicography. The whole text, and it's a really large text, le uh, still lacks an edition and its translation into other languages as well. Another very direct form of extension of the dictionaries will be through these lexical semantic studies that I have mentioned, the articles. They will have many features that uh, will be similar to dictionary entries. They have a lemmatized header, in this case in four languages, as you can see on the right-hand side, with the model article of Mirac. Um, the etymology, semantic tree structure, genus differentia definitions, and apparatus of graphical realizations, corpus material, and so on and so forth. The studies will extend, add to, advance, or even replace uh, entries of the four dictionaries, DAG, DF, DOM, and LAY. The confrontation of the dictionary data with the new comprehensive material accessible through the ALMA corpora in the four languages will substantially extend the lexicographical knowledge documented so far. This will put the dictionary data that is typically focused on one single language into a multilingual and pan-Romans context, shedding new light on terminology history of the lexemes, the etymology, and the history of concepts, and enhancing the comprehension of the interrelatedness of medieval vernacular languages that are hitherto scattered among individual dictionaries. The further dictionary processing, the third point, is achieved through semantic web technologies. Um, one of IMA's goals is to model the results as a linked open data, LOD, that will concern the text editions and the studies and also bibliography of the, of the project. This also includes the lexical semantic mapping. The lexical semantic mapping, mapping from 
um, the mapping of concepts of the things that are expressed through the representations in the historical or any languages, the so the words, to an entity of an external language independent knowledge base of a semantic web such as DBpedia or Wikidata also. To enhance this lexical semantic mapping, Alma will develop two domain specific historicized ontologies for medieval medicine and law. This uh, linked open data modeling now that will actually be concerned with the ALMA research results will not only cover these results, but will also include the original dictionary articles of the four dictionaries, the of Domblay and uh, DRG, and the lexical semantic mapping of the lexical units of these dictionary entries as well. The main vocabulary for the linked open data modeling will be, of course, onto Lex Lemon. Uh, we will produce RDF data, resource description framework data, and implement automatic processing pipelines from XML to RDF and XML TI to RDF. On the right-hand side, you see a tiny extract of one of the produced RDF data. In this case, it's data of the DF entry of a fiel, which means bile and gall bladder. The, now I'm speaking about the dissemination. So we will feed full DOM, DF lay, and possibly DRG entries as linked open data and RDF as re RDF as res resources into the semantic web. This will achieve a better accessibility and an integration into larger research contexts, which will be a contribution to the dictionaries well beyond Alma's core focus. Now let me evaluate these aspects, showing that it is, in my humble opinion, more than old wine and new bottles. These are the contributions from dictionaries to ALMA and ALMA to dictionaries. Um, this considers the reflections on corpus integration and why dictionaries help, the lemmatization, anchoring the lexical semantic studies and shedding light on cross-domain relations, and on the other side, ALMA towards dictionaries, the enlargement of the Lexeme inventory and enhancement of entries, and the modeling as linked open data. The first one, I think, is a very important one. It concerns, it concerns the corpus work. Limiting lexicological research to the material of a corpus is, I think, a problematic approach. A corpus and its borders create absences from the corpus, part of the corpus, not part of the corpus. So the results generated by the analysis of a corpus, irrespective of its composition and size, can actually only be relevant to that subset of language that is re represented in the corpus. For example, studying a corpus of the works of a single particular author, such as uh, Chrétien de Troyes, the famous French poet and founder of the textual genre of the chivalric romance, is interesting, but does not reveal how his language differs from the language of other authors. The insight gained from such a study will thus remain limited. The constitutive feature for the ALMA corpus is the discourse tradition, the technical texts. The problem is that, of course, terminology also occurs in many texts that do not belong to this particular discourse tradition. For example, we find many old French terms of ships and navigation, like dromuns, esnekes, halos, these are really particular technical terms, in the Vicente and mont de la Rey, an Anglo-Norman hagiographic poetry. Dictionaries are really crucial to find these terms and explain these terms. Also, the internal differentiation of a corpus must be supported by comparison with other literary and also other technical texts. For example, deeds. Deeds are part of um, technical discourse tradition. Deeds are, of course, more often about sales than is, for example, one of Chrétien de Troyes' uh, chivalric romances, such as the Perceval or the Lancelot. This naturally leads to a more frequent use of lexemes like old French achat, purchase, or vent, sale, in deeds than in a chivalric romance. But of course, this does not imply that achat and vent necessarily have to be diaphasically bound, and we also heard that in this morning's keynote. The solution is a recontextualization within the language as a whole by matching the hypotheses against broader lexicographical works. A second contribution of lexicography to ALMA becomes clear as soon as one tokenizes, annotates, and of course, lemmatizes a corpus text. Here we can draw on established models 
um, established by the state-of-the-art dictionaries, for example, for old French, the Lamellist of the Dea. The third point is anchoring the lexical semantic studies. While Alma focuses on the languages of two particular domains, the dictionaries examine and describe, of course, the language as a system with all functional areas beyond the technical vocabulary in question. Thus, lexicography enables anchoring these findings within the framework of the entire languages. And this is crucial for proper grasp, not only of the technical terms to be analyzed, but also of the words of the textual context. And for example, when we find a word in a technical tense with one isolated sense, so one sense with one attestation, it is really important to examine this with a dictionary because the rule of thumbs is there. An isolated uh, sense with one attestation is most probably a, prob a problematic or a wrong sense. Next point, the cross-domain relations. The studies of Alma shall also identify connections between different knowledge domains. Particularly important for medicine and the metabolic um, pathological fields is the domain of astronomy, astrology. Astronomical and astrological aspects can be really important to understand concepts of healthy and sick because it's all connected. And again, lexicography makes it possible to connect the dots. Now we come to the other side, contributions of Alma to lexicography. And to evaluate the possible enlargement of the lexeme inventory and enhancement of entries, uh, I conducted a very, very short case study based on the term, on the Middle French term addition that we found attested in the mentioned text of Guy de Choliac with a sense of protuberance of an osseous or cartilaginous structure. And these are the results in very, very short. The DF pré. Df pre is not the real scientific dictionary, df, but the pre-structured raw material of the dictionary. Thus, it has valuable yet completely unverified material. So in the df pre, we do find an entry, addition, but with senses of the general language, uh, the action of adding something, also that what is added, and the result of adding something. In the dag, we do not find an entry. Here, it must be said that the medieval Gascon scripturality is almost exclusively limited to the text genre of documents. So that is testaments, charters, court records, etc. The kind of sex and crime stuff, very interesting, in fact. Um, but it is unsurprising now to not find a term with a medical sense attested in the dictionary. Nevertheless, it is notable, I think, that no attestation at all with whatever meaning can be found. And here we queried the database for it. The uh, DOM on the right-hand side registers addition, in fact, in medical texts, but with other meanings than ours. And the lay has additione, um, again, only with general language senses, uh, addition and supplement. To sum up, the dictionary entries, the existing dictionary entries need reviewing because of the new text material or lack altogether. And this already points to a significant enhancement, this short study, enhancement of all dictionaries in question achieved by Alma's contributions, both with respect to improving the existing entries and also filling the gaps in their lexeme inventory. It is important to say that um, we will not touch the original dictionary articles, articles, but we will have the possibility to change the publications, the online publications, saying here you find an updated version in this uh, Alma database or something like this. So the information will be already in the dictionary. The second significant impact of Alma on lexicography is the modeling of the full dictionary entries as linked open data, the ones that are relevant for our studies. But an extension is possible. As soon as we have uh, installed the workflows for automatic um, modeling of linked data, we can extend this to even more dictionary articles. This leads to a contribution really beyond the scope of Alma's own lexeme inventory. And offering the lexicographical data as linked open data, the linguistic, textual, and historical cultural knowledge documented therein will be placed within new contexts and correlations. And the dictionary contents will be introduced to knowledge circulation really wider than that of historical lexicography and linguistics by adding the onomasiological ontological component to Alma, adding the known benefits of linked open data and thus enhancing visibility, reusability, availability, compliant with the fair data uh, principles. A short conclusion, ceci n'est pas un dictionnaire, 
Alma is not a real dictionary, but it can be interpreted as a particular real representation of a dictionary, much like Magritte's pipe, but on another abstraction level. The lexicography, in fact, is hidden in Alma, and in a double sense, in metaphorically hidden and also literally hidden because we cannot talk about it. Alma is both less and more than a dictionary. It is less because it focuses only on a part of the language covered by the comprehensive dictionaries, that is medical and juridical terminology, so it's kind of a specialized dictionary with all its pros and cons. And it is more. The conceptual entanglement benefits from the combination of reusing well-tried dictionary knowledge with the addition of new corpus material, integrating machine-driven methods, which wasn't done before, and introducing the pan-Romans perspective, and finally, of course, the linked data modeling and lexical semantic mapping. Thank you very much. Thank you for this very interesting presentation in the theme of the conference, right? The visible <laughs> lexicography. Okay, questions? Of, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> data. Well, you will not be surprised because two months ago we could have a look at this uh, work, which I really like a lot. And then. Uh, <coughs> A question and maybe a comment also related to <laughs> Marco. <laughs> uh, what is missing uh, in Ontolex and uh, Ontolex infrastructure so that you can realize your, your modeling? So did you recognize things that we could establish cooperation on this and then try to see? Because I think the terminology is the so this kind of thing we can work. And then I was wondering if your visualization <laughs> is something that <laughs> would not fit very well for this kind of work too. Well, to the first uh, question, yes, I've, I've, you know, I've looked uh, closely into Ontolex Lemon. I've already modeled the uh, DEAG dictionary, also the DEAG dictionary, DEAG dictionary as a uh, uh, linked open data with Ontolex Lemon. I think most of it is really offered by Ontolex. It's really good. There are some things missing, missing but also, you know, some things that is not the fault of Ontolex, for example, the language codes, which are missing from medieval language stages, but we're on the way to develop that further as well. And then uh, we might run into some problems with modeling the terminology, is something you know about, uh, but terminology for the medieval stages, so this is something that needs to probably need to be developed further. But the rest is actually quite good. I mean, we might... I don't know, bend the rules a little bit using uh, the alternative spelling variations for or, or graphical realizations and things like that. But um, as far as I know, it works really well. Okay. Uh, first comment back. Thanks for your talk. Um, regarding the linked data, um, what you were just mentioning following up from Thierry, you mentioned the Lemon Ontolex. Did you refer especially to the Lexicog module of that? And also, uh, are you planning relations with other projects such as Lila? And if I may also add to my questions uh, a little comment, uh, going back to the beginning of what you were talking in the lexical semantics studies section, and then it was mentioned again in uh, later in uh, online publication, I was wondering if you could consider changing the typography in the presentation rather than show it like an antique dictionary, liven it up in a modern way. Because when you are showing that entries there as the samples, it's in the, this uh, one, yeah, 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 that one. That's the old fashioned dictionary in print. In part, the whole thing you are doing is regenerating it to something completely new and modern. So think about using, first of all, a different kind of font, colors, uh, be free and, and just go wild with that. Thanks a lot. Yes, thank you, Ilan. You're absolutely right. Well, to, the, to answer the first questions, uh, I think we will be using all models of Lexica, of, of Ontolex Lemon, all the models. And uh, we would like to interlink with other dictionaries, of course. I mean, that's the whole sense of it. And then the reason why this looks like it looks is that this is the model I wrote for the application, which is written stuff and which is for people who like to uh, 
know what they're seeing, like traditional ways of you know presenting stuff. And this is not the future way of presenting our research findings in the internet. We will publish in print also parts of this, and then you will have to find a solution of you know uh, making it readable. But um, this is only this is only a model to show that. Uh, that we have a, a concept of what to show, but not exactly how, how we will show it yet. It will be closely uh, interconnected with the corpora, so you can go back and forth. It will be connected to the ontologies, um, and it will have all kinds of features, but that is not. We still have to work it out. We just started, and this is a, this is a future step, and we are ri right now working, working on the basis, on the, on the first steps. But uh, yeah, for sure, it's not going to look uh, statical like this, but thank you. Okay, last question, reaction. So thank you very much, a very quick one. Uh, so I would love to interlink the data from Lila for Latin with those yeah. from this project of for Homer's languages, of course, because there is a strict connection. I just have a curiosity. What kind of information do you plan to uh, model from scratch with new ontologies for law and medicine? Because you said that you want to build two new ontologies for that. The, the problem is that we, we want to do the lexico-semantic mapping. We want to not only model the words and the part of speech and you know what is linked on the data, but connect them to a semantic data, uh, you know, like Wikidata, DBpedia, something like that, or other ontologies uh, for the like the real world. What is a vein? What is an artery? What is the heart? And and what is uh, you know all that. The problem is though that. When you find modern ontologies, for example, vein and heart, you will find somewhere, but they're defined as modern concepts, modern physiological concepts, but the medieval concepts are totally different. So when, when I map, map the artère, old French, or let's say vein, then, uh, old French vein, to the modern vein, the modern vein is explained as a part of the concept of the blood flow and the, the blood circulation, the heart is a pump and a muscle and all that, but in the Middle Ages, it wasn't at all the vein was something totally different and not, you know, I don't need to tell you. So I don't want to map this because it would cause a semantic break. So what we're trying to, what we're trying to do is we will try to develop ontologies that are historicized that will depict the historical concepts that the people have in their head when they say a right vein. And uh, we think that was this might be useful for other historical projects for you know, for uh, Latin, for, uh, you know, whatever in, in the Middle Ages and also further along, for example, for law. Um, and we want to, of course, want to offer this to the community and to uh, be able to map to it. Okay. I think that's very important. Thank you again for a very nice presentation. And we again have some, a few minutes for changing rooms. Thank you.